have a responsibility to, to really to tune out the voices of of the haters of of the people that are constantly uh, double shilling and triple for him. checking and shilling for him and suggesting Sick. that somehow they're being biased, bending over backwards, treating him like a normal candidate. He's not a normal candidate. He is running to end American democracy as we know it. He's an authoritarian who a, a court uh, in in Colorado two days ago ruled that that he led an insurrection against the United States government. All right. So I got to address a few things here real quick. Then I'll finish the clip because he, he rattles off a lot of completely crazy things here. First off, that ruling in Colorado in that court, it's a kangaroo court. It's definitely going to get overturned. I mean, even uh, the judge in the case gave a legal exemption to Trump and didn't hold him legally accountable because the fact of the matter is, it's freedom of speech, okay? He told people to march peacefully. And yeah, he used some heated language. You know, we got to fight and this kind of thing. You can find Democrats doing that all day for years, okay? And they're never going to be held to that standard because, as we all know, it's different when they do it. But he told people to march peacefully and make your voices heard. And guess what? That's what 120,000 people did on that day. It was only a couple hundred that actually got into the fights with the riot police, okay? And the vast majority of the other people, like thousand or so people uh, who were involved in that whole thing, they were just in there walking around and they got like misdemeanor trespassing charges, okay? So it was a very tiny amount of people who actually fought with riot police. And I don't really think you can blame Donald Trump for that, especially when he was telling people he never told people to enter the Capitol. He told people to march peacefully. You know who did tell people to enter the Capitol? Ray Epps. He's on video for several days doing that, literally telling people to enter the Capitol and telling Baked Alaska that his whole plan was to, quote, storm the Capitol. And yet that guy has been treated as a victim or like they don't know who he is by the media and by the Democrats. Um, up until for years now, up until he finally got this little slap on the wrist misdemeanor charge to, for the cameras, which you know is going to be expunged later. So that guy, the guy's literally saying that my plan is to storm the Capitol, which is the phrase that the media and the Democrats used four years after that, correct? That guy they're not interested in. They say it's, you're a conspiracy theorist if you're interested in what he did, okay? They said that we're, they say we're trying to, uh, uh, absolve Trump by what Ray Epps did. No, Ray Epps has literally did the thing that they are all talking about. Donald Trump did not do it. Okay. And I don't even think he told people to go to the Capitol. He just said that I know you're going to the Capitol and I'm going to go down there with you or something to that effect. And again, it was mostly peaceful by their own standards out of 120,000 people, only a couple hundred really got into scuffles with riot police. And by their own by their own standards, that's mostly peaceful. Second, Donald Trump could never be an authoritarian. And let me tell you why. Because all the institutions are aligned against him. They are aligned with the left and with the Democrats, okay? It'd be very hard for Donald Trump to get in there and be just declare himself an authoritarian because every one of those institutions would come down on him, right? But if the Democrats put forward somebody to be as authoritarian, like Joe Biden, who is now literally doing the thing that Joe Scarborough is, is worried about here, he's trying to imprison his main opponent ahead of the election, okay? That's what Donald Trump, or what Joe Biden's doing. The media is giving him cover. The other institutions are giving him cover. That's how you get authoritarianism. I highly doubt you could get that with Donald Trump, but let's continue. He's charged with leading schemes to help overthrow the United States government. So so if they want to frame it uh, that way, that's fine. If, if you want to be fair, if you want to be fair, then you will frame this uh, as uh, Joe Biden being the candidate that supports American democracy and Donald Trump, a candidate who supports a new form of government here that's authoritarian. It's really that simple. And by the way, Reverend Allen, people go, oh, you can't compare him he to past Nazi it. leaders. You can't compare him to this past Nazi leader or that past fascist leader because he hasn't done that. Well, what hasn't he done? He hasn't done the things that the American judicial system did not allow him to do last time, but may very 
okay, so I'm just going to stop it there because he's rattled off a ton of stuff there. Of course, it's different when they make the Nazi comparisons, right? And the Hitler comparisons. If we do that, they come out and they say that's anti-Semitic. You can't compare what we're doing to what, ha what the Nazis did. You know, when people were comparing COVID and the lockdowns and the way that some Democrats were acting to Nazis, they told us, no, you can't do that. that uh, that's anti-Semitic. But yet they can do it and they carved themselves out an exception uh, to do that. But, and then he says here that Donald Trump is going to form a new form of government, this authoritarian government. Again, how could he do that? It's not possible. And Joe Scarborough just proved it there. He just said that the courts would not allow him to do what he wanted to do. And that's another point, is that they were actually going through the courts, taking legal avenues uh, uh, after the election, just like Democrats did after the 2000 election, just like Democrats did after the 2004 election, just like they did in 2016 with their schemes to try and get electors to vote against Trump in states that he won uh, and, and other states uh, to uh, Democrat schemes to throw out uh, and decertify votes in Ohio and Florida. OK, so all of these things are things Democrats do. And if he's worried about fascism taking over again, I, I have to just point out here that it's the Democrats and Democrat DA's Joe Biden's DOJ that's currently trying to imprison his biggest opponent ahead of the election. And believe me, if you think that they will stop there, they won't because Again, they are the true authoritarians. They are the ones with the power and the support base to carry it out. Very well allow him to do this time or a judicial system that will be ignored by Donald Trump and ran over by Donald Trump to create the greatest constitutional crisis of our lifetimes. Just because he hasn't done it yet doesn't mean he won't do it. When he gets a chance to do it, He's and if he is mouth. voted into office, then a lot of these people that are talking about literal or figurative or whatever the hell they're saying, you're going to look like idiots uh, because he will do, he will get away with, he will imprison, he will execute whoever he's allowed to imprison, execute, uh, 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 drive from the country. Just look at his past. Look at his past. Look at all the uh, all of his political opponents that he imprisoned, that he executed, and that he drove out of the country. Just look at everything he did. Oh, wait a minute. None of that happened. That's all a complete fantasy delusion. Like, what in the hell is he talking about? And I just, I really have to wonder if any of these people think about the fact that they're the ones, literally, their party is, are the ones in power. Their party are the ones they're shilling for. And, the you know, the president is currently in power. And he's literally, they're trying to imprison him. They talk so much about democracy. But you must not vote. If the American people get a chance to vote for this guy, they shouldn't be given a chance. They want to, and they might elect him. They shouldn't be given a chance to. Like, that's how is that democracy? That's just them forcing their opponent and forcing out. Uh, that's literally what they're talking about is forcing Donald Trump out of this. And yet, that's what he fears. Folks, that is what these people are worried about. It's the old uh, tale that we're used to with the left and Democrats. It's different when they do it. And they're di this is because they set standards that they're then never really think will come back to bite them because they're the ones in control. So who's going to enforce that, right? But it, they're worried that if Donald Trump gets in there, that he will be able to hold them to their own standards. So they're worried about that. But you notice there, he said multiple times, if the courts allow him, if the courts allow him. The courts would never allow him to execute people and imprison people just like for no reason, just nonchalant. Like that would never happen. And that's my point, folks. Uh, Donald Trump does not have the institu institutional support base to carry something like that out. It's impossible. However, the people that do have that ability, you're looking at right here. These people right here are the propaganda institutional support base that would prop up an a left-wing authoritarian dictatorship, one-party state. And I really believe that's where we're heading. That's a big part of my channel is that I'm trying to warn people about that. And I think that this is just another example of what we need to look out for and uh, why, you know, you probably need to vote for Donald Trump or whoever the Republican frontrunner is because if these people have their way, every opponent they face, they'll just turn into Donald Trump. They've done that for 20 years now. So no reason to think they'll stop now. All right, folks, that's all I got for that one. I appreciate you watching and I hope you keep checking back for more. See you on the next one.